Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, on Sunday, the 19th of December, 2021. And we have lots to talk about because this is a very intense time, and I have felt some very intense energies, and we're going to talk about all of that. So I hope you are all doing well as we approach the end of the year, the end of the month, and we uh, start marching towards a new year. So as you know, and as I've talked about for a while now, uh, Venus went retrograde in the middle of the night. And um, this is, as we know, a very intense and heavy and transformative uh, experience. And, you know, I've been talking about the fact that Venus and Pluto are sitting together. And Venus, you know, met with Pluto last Saturday and will meet with Pluto again on Christmas Day. And we will be in this Venus-Pluto vibe for several weeks because, you know, before Venus conjunct Pluto, she was very, very slow and she was gearing up to connect with Pluto. And then she turned around, you know, today, but she's still only a degree away from Pluto. She passed him by one degree. It's not like what we call refrenation. It refrains. She did not refrain. Refraining would be, you know, Pluto is at 25. If she had gotten to 24 Capricorn and she turned around, even though she's still close to Pluto, we may have felt it, but it's not like sitting on Pluto, passing Pluto and coming back over Pluto again another in another week. So that makes a huge difference. The refrenation or the refraining of like saying being at 24 where Pluto's at 25 would have been not quite the aspect and we would have, it would have been a build up, a build up, a build up until she went direct and crossed over Pluto once. That's not what she's doing. Um, so this energy is different. A lot of things have happened to people. A lot of things have, um, you know, sifted f uh, from our subconscious that we need to deal with. I know stuff has sifted from my subconscious last week that I'm, that I'm dealing with, that I've been doing, working on. Um, this is a time to work on some very profound stuff. It is hard when things happen that we feel we don't have control over because Pluto is about control and we do want to control things and we do want to uh, keep, you know, our hands around something and a lot of times we can't do that, especially with, you know, a, an inner planet triggering Pluto. And anything that is going to trigger Pluto is going to make us feel like we are not in our, like we, we can't control something. So for example, I'll tell you what happened here. Um, one of my very dear friends here on Monday announced that she came to me and she talked to me personally. Um, and she said, you know, she and her husband had decided to move back to Barcelona where they're from. And so this is a profound shift in our community. They are an integral part of our community. We love them, their family. Um, and one of the reasons, you know, there were various reasons her husband's work and has changed and, and some other things. But one of the important things was that she said her father wasn't well and she wanted to spend, she didn't think he was going to make it and he was in the hospital and she wanted to spend time being with her father. And so, you know, it was a very sad decision for them. They don't want to leave. They've had an incredible experience here, but they knew it was time for change and time to move on for lots of reasons. And so I was very sad. And so here's so I can't control that. Can I control that? It's not my life. I could tell her all I want to. No, we love you. You need to stay. But it's not my life and it's not my decision and it's never going to be the same here without them. And we love them dearly. And we, you know, we look forward to spending these last, you know, holidays with them. You know, the Christmas and New Year's and it's going to be their last holidays here with us. And, you know, it's sad for us, but we were going to make it special for them. They weren't going to leave till February and they aren't going to leave till February. And then on Friday, I just found this out yesterday, my friend found out her father passed away. And she had to go back home. She flew back to Barcelona, leaving her husband and little girl here. And, um, you know, I talked with him before and, you know, he said, everything's fine. You know, she, my friend is going through the funeral and everything with her mother. 
But again, she could she control that? No. You know, sometimes Pluto makes us feel we're out of control and we don't have like we want to grasp control. We want to point a finger at something in our life that, you know, caused this and it's not necessarily the case. There's life and life happens. And um when we work on ourselves, we can, you know, become very conscious of the, the energies that are driving us in our lives and our unconscious, subconscious energies. And when we are working together, um, you know, with our, our energies and our, our, our subconscious things that we're not conscious of, it's, it's a lot of deep, intense work and it's not easy or simple. Now, do I believe that each of us is going to go through something? Yes, of course. Each of us is. I'm going through something. My friends are going through things. Very little of the people in the world are going to come out of this without something dramatic, usually. And it's not that we're all going to be in high drama. Like, look, everybody here isn't going through uh, a process like my friend. You know, she's Capricorn, in fact. And so this is happening in Capricorn. And so all of us are standing by watching her and supporting her and her family here. But is it happening to me? No. My father died years ago. My parents died years ago. So no, it's not happening. I know what it's like. I know what she's going through. I can empathize. But, and that's all we can do is we can empathize. And, but you have to expect that, you know, during Venus Pluto, it's not de- always a coming together, especially when it's three times. There's often separations that we can't control. It's not entirely 100% going to happen. Like, you know, I'm meaning that it doesn't have to be a separation. It could be something else. Maybe, you know, it's like, oh, like I heard of someone yesterday got fired from work. Okay. Um, It could be that. It it could be anything that causes um, some sort of end or some cycle ending in our lives. So it isn't about, um, it isn't about, you know, intense, passionate love, um, because, you know, and that's often what Venus Pluto does. It brings us intense, passionate love. But when Venus goes retrograde, that's not the case. We cannot ask the goddess for something because the goddess is not in a position to give us, you know, a frivolous love affair. She's not going to do that right now. You know, she's, we, we got to get down to what is the core, root core situation in our lives and how we've grown and changed and what we need to let go of now and where we need to um, connect with uh, our, own, our own energies that seem to be throwing obstacles in our path. We have to be responsible for our own um, experiences, you know. Um, There's a collective experience that we all take part of. So, you know, when I say um, there is a collective, meaning that, okay, there's a collective here in my community. Um, We all on some unconscious level supported my friend in, in leaving. And, and we, we grew, you know, we outgrow things. And so we have to take responsibility for outgrowing something. And she and her husband were, it was time for them to leave because, you know, maybe they've outgrown Costa Rica. Maybe it's time for them to, you know, head back to Barcelona because it's a new chapter in their life. Everybody is starting, ending an old chapter, starting a new chapter. The new chapter comes later, not now. The new chapter is not upon us now. We have to clear out the old for the new to come in. Everybody is clearing something out and it's fine. You know, we just have to be aware of it. We can't hold on to the past. And that is, you know, it could be something you don't want to hold on to. Like, you know what? I have an emotional situation that I want to hold, don't want to hold on to. It could be, you know, my friends want to stay here, but they, it's like over for them. So, and now, you know, she's lost her father. So that's, that's something that's really profound. Um, and in any event, Venus Pluto asks us to go into our own 
subconscious and clear out the old and make way for the new. And that's what we have to do now and get excited about what the new is. What's new? Because if we keep the old things in our life, it's like, if I don't clean out my closet, I can't bring in new clothes, right? If I don't throw out my old shoes, I can't bring in new shoes because you've got it. You know, you look at your shoes and you're like, well, I've worn these till they've fallen apart. Well, I can't wear them anymore. I got to get rid of them, right? It's, it's, that's the way our unconscious works too. <laughs> So I've talked a lot about Venus Pluto. Let's talk about Chiron. Chiron went direct today. It's been retrograde for several months. It is the comet or asteroid, whichever you prefer, that uh, rules our wounds, where our wounds are, where we need to heal our wounds. Everybody has wounds. And Chiron has been retrograde for months, and so things surface today. Things surface as, um, as Venus shifted direction, Chiron shifted direction several hours later, and Chiron is about um, the healing or the wounded healer or the, the experience of healing the wounds that we all have. Now, when we say the wounded healer, as I've described before on this podcast, it's the place where each of us, you know, needs to lick our wounds. And in mythology, Chiron was a healer, and he could not heal his own wounds, so therefore he was sent to the starry skies by the other um, gods and demigods. He was a demigod. And um, he was sent to the starry skies, and um, he is the centaur in the constellations. And we all have to sort of, you know, we go back. It's it's the wound that we have to revisit, and we, we heal over and over again. And we the thing that we work on in our lives all the time. And each of us has that as well. So that's Chiron the wound that we lick over and over again, like your dog licks his paw if he's been wounded there. So, okay, so moving right along, um, we have some other things this week. There's another big thing happening, and it's the solstice. And this is the time of year in the north that is the shortest day. And this happens um, on the morning of Tuesday the 21st. So this is the sun going into Capricorn, and it's 11 a.m. Eastern, or I'm sorry, yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and this is a, you know, a turning point. The sun leaves Sagittarius and goes into Capricorn. And this is a very potent time because the sun is once again on the cardinal axis as we change seasons. The cardinal axis is also called the world axis. So sometimes things happen in the world on collective levels and we experience something profound. But more importantly, this is the shortest day of the year in the north and after the 21st, the days will gently, slowly start getting longer. So it is a very profound moment because this is the disappearance. This is the sun god disappearance. And many mythologies are based on the uh, myth of the sun god. And, you know, can you imagine what ancient cultures were like when they didn't have all sorts of telescopes and science and measurements? And all they knew is that the, the sun was disappearing. It was shrinking. It was slower and slower. And every day was shorter and shorter. And especially when you go really far north, like, you know, up in Canada and, and Sweden and Scandinavia and all, it's very dark. It stays very dark for this time of year. And they get very little light. And imagine how it was when we didn't know the science of this and we just saw the sun disappearing. And so the sun that is the life force, the sun that gets us up in the morning, the sun that makes our plants grow, that gives our flowers light, that inspires chlorophyll in the plants it, and inspires us to stand in the sun. This is a very profound thing for the sun to disappear. And so for us, the days get shorter. And for me here in Costa Rica, it's an equal thing. They, actually, the days started getting longer a, a couple of days ago. They, they were shorter back in November, and now they're getting longer. So we're very close to the equator. It doesn't really make that uh, adjustment. We don't have a very short day. It actually was shorter like a couple of weeks ago. But regardless, it is the myth of the sun god. And the sun god 
rises again in three days. It, and several days later, you start to notice that the light is coming back. The light is coming back. And my mother used to say, yeah, sometime after New Year's, because that's when you really notice that things are getting lighter, longer, the day's getting longer. So we're on the other side of the calendar where we were during the solstice, the summer solstice, where it was the longest day of the year. And this is when, you know, it's time to hibernate. Now, Venus, Pluto, we're going back to them, asks us to do a little bit of hibernation because we have to go within and talk to ourselves and connect. And the sun is asking us to kind of do some hibernation right now. So this is, this is a good thing to do. Um, one of the things that I talked about on Instagram this week is that there is a point where we feel like we are um, wanting to pull back and not connect with people. Okay. And, but it's holiday season. You can't do that. So, you know, you can, I mean, you can, but anybody can at any point, but Venus Pluto wants a deep connection. It always wants depth and it wants a transformation. So you have to navigate the moving backwards to connect with your in, in inner world and connecting deeply with friends and loved ones because they love you, you love them. Um, we feel separated from love when we step away. We feel separated from love when we don't engage, especially at holiday time. We're supposed to be, this is the time we're supposed to be engaging. And it's time to connect and be with people and deeply appreciate and love people, despite everyone's flaws. We're not perfect, you know. Um, and we just send our love to each other and we connect deeply with the part of us that is loving and lovable. And that's something really important to do during Venus Pluto. Um, even if you do want to retract and walk away, there's important times to go forward and back. We all have to navigate and know internally when it's time to step forward and be with people and when it's time to, you know, sit down with our journal and do our, do our emotional homework. Um, okay, now, another thing that's happening... And we're just chock full of things this week. And I mean, I know it's the holidays. It's like, how inconvenient is this? It's like, I want to celebrate on Christmas. You people are traveling. Why is it, why is it inconvenient? Why should I have to suffer? You're not suffering. It's just we're working through something. Everybody's working through something. Um, one of the things that's happening um, in the Eastern time zone on the 24th, the wee hours of the 24th, about 2 and 15 in the morning, is that Saturn and Uranus are going to square for the last time this year. Ah, remember Saturn and Uranus? They haven't made a square in a while. They started back in February, and then they made another square in the middle of the year, and then they, now we're, we're feeling it again, and this is the last one. There were three. Um, one of the things that's so important about this is that we are finishing a cycle. The cycle started back in February. What did you start back in February? Did you start things back in February that were really important? And um, are you dealing with, and everyone is dealing with this on some level, restrictions versus liberation? Wow, we're seeing it in the world now, aren't we? There is a very strong component of Saturn that likes the status quo, wants to follow the fold, and just um, not ask questions and just keep moving. Um, and, you know, deal with whatever they're being told, what authority's telling them. Um, and Uranus doesn't like that. Uranus wants liberation, freedom, revolution. Uh, Uranus gets very restless, very easily. And Uranus isn't a planet that uh, wants to conform at all. Saturn is more conformist. Saturn's like, I'm going to be the good bunny, and I'm going to conform, and I'm going to follow what I need to do, and I am, um, you know, I'm going to stay and not revolt and not complain and not be, you know, a revolutionary in this. Well, this is a theme throughout history. People. There are people who want to revolt. There are people who don't want to revolt. And that's all at odds right now. There's a lot of division in the world. You know where that is. And the countries are divided. People are divided. There's lots of division in the world. And this is 
uh, very evident in Saturn and Uranus. This is a very collective cycle. Uranus is a collective planet. Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus is a very security oriented planet and they, are, you know, Taurus people like the roof over their head. They like the, you know, the food on the table. They like their feet on the ground. And Uranus comes in and rattles that and says, forget it. That's not going to happen. <laughs> we, need, we need to shake this up. Stop being so, um, you know, uh, complacent. You have to start understanding where things cannot stay the same. Taurus does not want to budge. Um, you know, my teacher used to say, Taurus, you can't move a Taurus off a dime. And, you know, it's hard to get them to do things to budge. If you've got planets in Taurus, you understand this. And one of the things that's so important um, right now is that Uranus is not it, Uranus like Scorpio, the opposite sign of Taurus. So Uranus is not like always um, smooth moving through Taurus. Uranus says, hey, come on, we've got to shake up what has been status quo for too long. What's been just sort of, uh, you know, in your life forever. No, we got to shake it up. Things have to change. You can't continue this way. And, you know, there's a lot of that going on right now. <laughs> so you got the Venus Pluto, you got the Chiron going direct, you got Venus going retrograde, and you've got Saturn squaring Uranus. And Saturn and Uranus do not see things eye to eye. A square is a challenging relationship between two planets. They are almost opposites, someone said to me earlier today. Um, they're almost opposites. And Saturn really wants things to keep, you know, they want, they want to go to work every day. They want to have things very regular. And Uranus says, I don't think so. You know, so it's an interesting dynamic because Saturn is sitting in Uranus's sign. Uranus rules Aquarius. And Uranus is in a very, very um, earthbound sign of Taurus. And so it, there's a little bit of like confusion as how to navigate this. Like, where do I connect with the part of me that wants to revolt? How do I do this? How do I a appease everybody? Well, you can't appease everybody. You're not. You've got to listen to your heart and go, you know, according to your heart. And you know, this is very, very important, okay? It's very important to pay attention and sort of intuit and use your intuition on this where this is going to um, be necessary to uh, do, some, do some housekeeping and, and do some boundary keeping. You know, Saturn's about boundaries. Uranus wants to break the boundaries. Uranus wants to break the rules. And Saturn says, no, we're keeping the rules in place. And Uranus says, no, these rules don't work anymore. Sorry, these rules just don't work for me anymore. And, you know, you're seeing protests around the world. Yes, that's Uranus. <laughs> protests, revolution, signs, you know, marches. Those are Uranian things. Saturn doesn't do that. Saturn stays home and says, wow, look at that. What's going on outside, you know? Oh, I'm glad I'm not out there, you know? Um, maybe you have a little bit of both in you. We all do. And we're all watching this, you know? We're watching how um, Saturn and Uranus are kind of duking it out. So that's part of it. You're, you may feel that. What have you been doing since February? Where have you been? broken old patterns, Uranus. Where have you been afraid to break old patterns, Saturn? Where Uranus is saying, sorry, babe, this is, this is over. And Saturn is saying, you know, that, no, I want this to continue. Mm -mm, that's not the way it works. You know, the slower moving planet always wins and that is Uranus. So stay tuned. The revolution may be televised. <laughs> And then what else do we have on, you know, the next time we see each other will be, well, the next time we talk to each other will be the 26th. And um, between now and then, a couple of other things will happen. Mars will try and Chiron. So Mars, you know, Chiron's in Mars' sign of Aries, and Mars is in Sagittarius, and they will connect in a very positive way next Saturday, the 25th, Christmas Day. And, you know, this is a very supportive thing to work on one's wounds. It's a supportive thing to understand where, you know, the wounds are in our lives. It's 
Mars is an action planet. It's direct. It's not retrograde. It's in Sag. It's a very action oriented um, experience. You know, Mars in Sagittarius. Mars likes to be in Sagittarius because it's fire. And, you know, this is a fiery trine that is a very um, good, it's good to have fire in the sky. Remember I said we have to have a balance of elements. And, you know, we've got some things in Sag. The sun is only going to be in Sag for another couple of days, but Mars will stay there with the south node and um, Chiron is in Aries. So we have a good amount of fire. We have a ton of Earth um, with Uranus and Taurus and Venus in... Capricorn and Mercury and Capricorn and Pluto and Capricorn. So yeah, and then the sun will go into Capricorn this week and we will have four planets in Capricorn for a while because Mercury is going to retrograde in Capricorn too. So that's not till January, but we've, <laughs> we're going to have a bunch of planets in Capricorn for a while. So yeah, Venus will be there till March. So that's a lot of Earth. There's practicality in this. And Capricorn is also about time because it's ruled by Saturn. So, um, you know, the time it takes, the time it takes to heal, the time it takes to work through things. What is time? Time is a construct. We create time. Um, the, the sun rising, the sun setting, that's all time. You know, the day getting shorter, that's about time. And so... Time is, time is a big theme right now. And, you know, Mars in these days ahead is, you know, moving closer and closer to uh, the place where the eclipse took place. So that was 12 degrees of Sagittarius. And that won't happen this week. That's not going to happen till the 30th of December, which we'll talk about next week. Um, but Mars hitting the eclipse point that's, that's a something. Okay. So just know that Mars is gearing up to, to conjunct that eclipse point that we had on the 4th of December. So what else is going on? Venus will conjunct Pluto for the second time on the 25th. Um, you know, again, when you're gathering with people, connect, be, uh, be congenial, can connect deeply and profoundly and connect deeply and profoundly with yourself as well. Um, where do you feel unloved? Where do you feel unlovable? Where do you feel that you are, um, you know, accepting new love into your life? And, um, you know, where have you cast out the old? Um, what else is happening tomorrow? Mercury trines Uranus. That's a really good aspect. It's good for thinking. It's good for analyzing. It's good for, um, high level thinking. It's good for meditating. It's good for, uh, connecting with energies that are not of this earth, even though they're both in earth signs, you know, it can be very practical, but it is a time of real, um, you know, tuning into something bigger than this earth and, why things happen. Everything happens for a reason. And it is not, um, you know, it's not, uh, you know, Mercury trines Uranus a couple times a year. Um, so it's not an uncommon aspect, but it only happens a couple times. Um, so it's really a good use of, you know, brain power, brain energy. Um, you know, it's, since it's in Earth, it's good to be grounded while you are doing any sort of spirit work but it's really good time to connect with the spirits and connect with your guides because they're ready to speak. So, you know, if you do that work, that's excellent. Um, Mercury will then sextile Uranus next, uh, I'm sorry, not Uranus, Neptune next Sunday. So this is all like Mercury is moving from a very nice aspect with Uranus to a very nice aspect with Neptune. This is all time to connect with spirit. It's very important to do that right now and connect with your guides and connect with what is, um, you know, uh, the messages you're receiving. So very important. And that's about it. One other tip for Venus Pluto, Venus is retrograde for 40 days. And, you know, during this cycle, it's what else is it? 40 is, uh, like a, often a, a mystical number. And one of the things we also do for 40 days is we chant. Um, if you've ever done a Hindu chant, you have to do them for 40 days and it's recommended to use 
a set of mala beads. If you've ever seen mala beads, there's 108 beads. It's like a rosary, except it's Hindu. And I have two sets of beautiful mala beads. And one of the things I recommend doing is chanting to the goddess or chanting about love. And one of the chants for that is Aham Prema, which is I am divine love. That's really a powerful chant to do for 40 days during this time period. So um, if you do a chant, um, you might want to chant to some other deity, maybe Lakshmi or one of the other goddesses. Uh, you can look online for those um, chants. They play them on YouTube. You can listen to them every day for 40 days. But a Hampre Ma is a very popular and simple one. You can do it in 10 minutes, 108 beads in 10 minutes. But if you do the mala beads and you commit to a 40-day chant, you can't forget. So try to do the same time every day, like maybe before you get out of bed or before you, when you get up in the morning, um, chant whatever you choose, you know, aham prema, for example, for 40 days. If you skip a day, you have to start all over again. So you want to make sure you do this in, in the 40 days and stick to the time and you, and make sure you check it on your calendar if you have to, but you don't want to start all over again, especially during a Venus retrograde cycle. So this is a really good time to take hold of that and connect with it. And I wish everyone a beautiful week and an incredible holiday. If you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas, have a beautiful, beautiful Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is a big day here. And then, you know, we celebrate Christmas day too, but Christmas Eve is really the big day. So I wish you a beautiful, beautiful holiday and gratitude, gratitude to each and every one of you. And may you have gratitude for everything the universe has given you in this year, even though it's been a Saturn Uranus year and um, many blessings upon everyone. Thank you for listening.